Hello folks, welcome back um, to Four Wheel Drive UK. What we're going to do this week is we're going to get you a bit of stuff uh, in the workshop or outside the workshop or in the cars or something like that, you know. Um, as you know, these Land Rovers, there's always a lot of work to do on them, keep them going. Um, so we've got a few bits to do on Dora here today. Uh, I'll show you some of the stuff that we're going to do. Now, from the videos and stuff, you'll probably know that um, my ECU has been relocated to the inside of the car. Uh, doesn't look very pretty. So what I'm going to do is try and modify this bit here today. Uh, we'll drop the shelf down so that the ECU sits lower and we can actually get the airbag cover back on. Um, also, you might notice down here, bits of string and all sorts holding my glove box in. So we're going to move that and get that fixed so that, that works. Um, also up underneath there, you see the blower motor. Bit of a job to get in and out they are. Um, but that one's very, very noisy. Um, I don't know what's wrong with it, it's probably full of shite. But I've managed to source another one. Um, out of this lovely baby here. Uh, and the one that's come out of that is like brand new. So we're gonna have a pop at getting that in um, and see whether in a couple of hours time, I'm sorry that I bothered, but we'll see. Uh, hopefully it shouldn't be too big a job. Um, and I'll take you along for the ride. Let's see, let's see how much fun this really is. Stick with us um, and let's see whether we have some fun today. So, bits that we saved from that old uh, black one out there. There's the new heater motor. Um, that's new. It's like new, isn't it? It's very clean. Um, it's quite a straightforward fit, really. Only a couple of plugs, it's just a bit awkward to get at. And then we've got the, the various bracketry here that all fits the, uh, where the airbag sits on. That's the, um, the original airbag. So, we'll see what we'll do is we'll remove all this airbag from in here. Hopefully, and just get the cover back on. Uh, new binnacle, because mine's a bit battered. So I thought, I might just put that on as well. Um, now, as a lot of people know, these D2s tend to have a lot of issues with um, fueling systems. Now I've got a thing at the minute with, uh, if it runs less than half a tank, it's a bastard to start in the morning. And that's basically to do with this thing here. This thing, fuel filter head. Now inside here there's all sorts of gubbins, inside there there's a, a non-return valve, inside this one I think there's, a, there's an air bleed. Um, and the one that I've put on it, I swapped mine a little while ago while I was having some issues similar to the issues Connor was having. Um, and I think it was put together wrong in the factory, I think the air non-return that should be in this one is either, in this one sorry, is either not working or it's not there. So Connor, very nice of him. Very nice of him, has donated this to Dora's cause. Um, it's not a big job, it's only a couple of bolts. So I thought what I might do is we'll stick this on today and see if that does away with the, uh, with the starting issue Dora has when she's only got very low fuel in the tank. Let's see, <laughs> will it work? Who knows, who knows? So, as you probably know, there it is. There's the filter head. There's these two bolts here, that one and that one to take out and the whole thing will fall off. And then these are these horrible push fits. So I think what I'm gonna do is take these two off before I take these off so I don't get fuel everywhere. 
correct. We'll take the whole thing off, bolt the new one up, and then take the pipes off and pop them on, I think. Okay, so, start by taking these two bolts out, which hopefully won't be too bad. Eesh. Doesn't want to move, does it? So, in true four-wheel drive UK fashion, we'll just struggle on. That's the first one. So, it looks like at some point, probably when I changed it last time, the bolt snapped. Um, and I've replaced that. The standard nut and bolt. Let's hope they come undone. <coughs> I think we're gonna have the same issue here. Yeah, that one's come undone nice and easy. And what we'll do is we'll take this off, and once we've got it off and the new one fitted. Oh, bit of drama going on down the back coast road there. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll get this off. And what we'll do, just out of interest afterwards, is we'll have a look and see which way round they are. Okay, so I found the easiest way to get these off with a pair of pipe grips. You squeeze the two flats, squeeze it down, and pull, oh, they will come off. Now, remember which way around these go, okay? So what I'm gonna do at the moment is put these on now, just to make sure they're all in the right place. Oh, that was the back one. That was the front one. So let me just go and, I'll just tighten this up. We'll put these straight on. So, new filter. That one went on that end. Basically, just push them on. That one went on that end. Just push it again, just push on. So you should be able to push it on and feel the click as they clip in. Same with these. Squeeze on the flats. There is a special tool you can get for this, and I think Connor's got one. It just so happens that Connor's not here. So that's the new one now fitted. All on. So these are just a push fit. They just push straight on, clip back on. And hopefully, what we're doing. So here's the keys. We'll just initiate the bleed sequence on it now, um, which I'm sure you all know. Turn the ignition on, pump the pedal five times. One, two, three. Four, five, and what should happen is you should get your engine management light flashing on here, but mine doesn't work. But 
I think you can hear it there. Now you can just see. A bit of an air leak there, a bit of a leak. So I just need to nip them up. We're going to get a spanner. Just out of interest, I'm going to take this one out and let's see whether the air bleed is in there. Is there a duck bill in here? There is. It seems. And it works. So it seems it wasn't that. So I'm probably still going to have the same issue. Maybe. I don't know. Never look at the other ones. I don't think there should be anything on this one. No, that's right. So maybe by changing that filter, that made no difference. I don't know. Let's just try these ones. So this should have I think the air bleed in it. This one. Where's your ass? There's the air bleed there. So that looks like that one is built correctly. Which is a bit odd. Because I thought that's what my issue was. And it was wrongly built. Um, hey ho. Let's check this one, make sure. My understanding is there should be nothing in this one. seems that filter head is built correctly which makes me think I've just wasted my time <laughs> but you've got to try these things eh if you don't know I mean it might work I don't know we'll see we'll see how it goes I'll report back okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just remove the, um, the ECU from this spot I've got it on. Like I say, you've probably seen it in the videos that I have it sat on the dash. Um, I just want to make it a little bit more, look nicer, do you know? More standard. So uh, I've taken the glove box out, which is only a couple of screws. Um, we'll whip this ECU off. So I've got the extension loom that comes through into the cart, which is... And then sorry it's difficult to get off these plugs. That's the black one off. Almost. And then the red one. Right, so keep that safe. This little thing here. I don't even know if I need this still. So before I had my TD5 inside, man, um, I used to play about a little bit myself. And this thing here, this is called the boost box. Um, and what that does is that allows the that takes out the the, um, the overboost protection in the D2. Generally, in that ECU there, there's. Um, there's an overboost protection at 1.2 bar. Um, so before I had everything mapped, I put this in so it didn't go into limp mode uh, and I played about with the actuator myself. Um, I'm going to leave it in because I don't know whether it still needs to be there. Since Jose did the map, I'm not sure whether he took out the over the overboost anyway because it now boosts to about 1.5, 1.6 tops, I suppose. 
Um, so I'm going to leave that in anyway. Um, not really sure whether it needs to be there, but like I say, I'm going to leave it in. So yeah, I'll crack on. We'll uh, get these last few bits out and then I'll hopefully show you putting it all back together and making it look a bit more like a normal car. So let's get that one out. That's what just need to go and get a couple more spanners, I think. And whether I'll get these. No. I'll just go and get a couple of spanners. We've got to take all this out to get at the blower motor anyway, so that's why I'm doing this because uh, I want to change the blower motor. It takes such a racket when you turn it on, and um, I think it's just got a load of crap stuck in it. It's maybe been off road some time underwater, no doubt. Maybe got a load of mud in it. Maybe that was Salisbury Plains as well. I don't know. Ended up with a lot of issues after Salisbury Plains. It's all part of the fun, isn't it? It's all part of the fun. Right. So that's that bracket out the way. Well, that's the one that it normally sits on. What we need to do is we need to modify that in some way so that this end uh, drops down. Cut my finger there, look again. Um, but yeah, we'll have another look at that. We'll put a bit of tape on that, I think. Um, right, so let me just have a quick look. This here is a temperature sender, it comes with that clock. So I think, yeah, to the inside of the car. Let me just have a quick look what I did in it. <laughs> I'm none the wiser. I can't remember really how I took it out. Um, I think I'm going to take this bottom bracket out. Um, just because it looks like it's probably going to be in the way. could do this without taking this bottom rail out but I just feel it's going to give me a bit more room I seem to remember it was proper awkward trying to get the, the motor out now it's one thing just pulling something out if you're not putting it back in um, but it's quite another if you want to get it back in which clearly we do I need to go and get size is that 10 mil spanner to look at here now is making sure that I don't pull anything else out and damage anything else trying to get it out so just trying to make some space uh, let me see that's what I'm trying to get out that thing in there uh, sorry about that folks battery died so just to keep you up to speed what we've done then so we've taken this bracket that sits in here so we've taken that off uh, taking all the nuts and bolts out that sort of allow this to move which will give us a bit more space to get this out 
I've unplugged that wiring harness from there, which is basically the um, controls. And then I've unplugged this wiring harness from down here, which is basically the power. Okay, that's the airbag. Oh, you all know what that is. There we go. Let me just get this thing. Eh? Sorry about this. Connor. It's a spreadsheet engineer. Well, hello. How are we doing, bud? Uh, well, I've just dropped the heater motor out of the car. What a job. Say hello to the hello. camera, Connor. Say hello to the camera. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> anyway, back to the job in hand. Now then, let me show you why I think this is making a noise. I don't know whether you can see in there. Let's get it outside in the daylight. See? It's rather full of rubbish. All that really is not meant to be in your, in your heater. Um, so anyway, we've got a nice clean one here, as you can see. All nice and clean, that one. Nothing inside there. So we're going to have a go at putting that one back in. Into that there space. Okay, so we've got the, motor, the, the blower motor back in place now. It's a bit awkward. But as you can see, it's all slotted in. There's a little, there's a bit in there. I don't know whether you can actually see where the where it goes fits in. Also in here where it fits in. So we've got it all in, sat in, and just put this bracket back in. And then there's some adjustment on that to pull it up. So we'll just get that tightened up. We'll lift the motor up and, and tighten that bracket down. I think what we'll do then is we'll. Um, We'll give it a, a quick try, a quick run, just to make sure that it's all okay, you know, before I go boxing everything up. Now I've lost my ratchet. Red and black, rather. Go into that red and black down there. So, let's see. Turn the ignition on. Oh, look how quiet that is. That's very quiet compared to what it was. So it seems at least that bit was a success. Um, so what we'll do now is rebuild all this part of the dash, get all this put back in. Um, and then we can look at modifying this bracket to take the uh, the ECU and try and make that a little bit tidier, just so it looks a bit better, you know? It's all about how it looks, isn't it, these days? All about how it looks. So stick with us. We'll see how we go. Okay, so um, skip the boring bits, you know, pissing about with, the, with the, the, the bracket. What I've had to do, you can probably see there, I've modified that bracket slightly. Um, and what I've done, these holes here that were the mounts are now there. So you can see what I've done is I've dropped it down a slight bit. I have to take this bit out of here just to allow that movement. Um, and what that's done is that's dropped it down a little bit further in there and give me a little bit more clearance between the heater duct and what was the shelf for the, um, the airbag. So, fed the ECU loom back through there. Um, what I've had to do is take the little tabs off. There's normally on this ECU, there's usually one there and two on the back there. So, I don't know whether you can actually see that, but I've had to cut those off 
just there and there and one there and that's just to give me enough clearance so that when we pop the ECU in there she fits nice and snug let's see that'll plug back in there and then what I've done that's the old airbag and um, I've basically just taken the airbag out so there's just a row of rivets along there another row of rivets along there which I've drilled out and then that will look something like that it's a door it's going to look quite normal and then obviously we'll pop a um, the new glove box in so that's the new blower all in situ um, wasn't too bad a job to be honest um, all gone in works nicely a lot lot quieter uh, oh, 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 there. Oof. It's a bit of a worry, isn't it? But everything works at the moment. At the moment. Um, so, yeah. We're getting somewhere with it. Um, stick with us. We'll see. We'll get this fixed back in. Get it looking kind of normal. Let's hope she starts up all right. Um, uh, I think I might change these door cards because, as you can see, they're not right. They should be the grey ones like this. And it just so happens in this car right here, it's got the right colour. And there's the driver's door one. So, I might even do that, you know. I might even put them on because she does look a bit odd with the tan door cards, doesn't she? I do love old Dora. Anyway, I'm waffling now. Um, so that's basically what, we've, what I've done there. Nice little easy enough mod. Put it all back all back together there. Um, this little thing here, I'm sure those of you know, no. Those of you don't, tough. Um, <laughs> yeah, readily available and the yellow things. Uh, so, up to this now, doesn't give me light over there so one at the steering wheel gives me the light now but yeah that's what this thing is here um, I'm sure you like I say those who know no those who don't don't bother leave it alone right so that's all the, the piss about work done down there all the bracketry's in everything fits um, so it's just a matter now really of uh, popping the, the plugs back in uh, and we'll give her a fire up. I hope she runs proper. So, black to the black, obviously. Don't try putting black to the red. Won't work. <laughs> black to the black, red to the red. Um, like I said earlier, I've got this boost box thing that I've got here. I don't really know if it's needed at the moment anymore. Um, with now having the TD5 map and the, the VNT and everything on it. However, it's there, it's wired in, it doesn't do any harm. So I'm gonna leave it in. Um, what I need to do is just run this earth down, because it needs an earth. And what I do is I generally just earth that, there's a little stud underneath here, which is ideal for it. Um, so I'll just pop that round there. That's it. That needs to just go on there. to get it through a hole so just straighten that out and I've got a nut somewhere for it I'm sure oh the sun's right in the eyes here you know do you feel for me people do you feel for me uh, right so get that earth out on there I'm hoping doing this, because um, I've dropped this down a little bit, I hope it doesn't interfere with the glove box. It shouldn't do. I wouldn't have thought so. 
<laughs> There's no guarantee. <laughs> There's absolutely no guarantee. And you know what I should have done? I should have run a new bloody aerial in for the radio. I'm having a nightmare with my radio. I've got no radio in Dora. I haven't had for months. And every time I put one on, it doesn't work. Um, I suppose what I should have done really is while I had the dash put out, is I should have run a new aerial through, shouldn't I? Never mind, eh? I can struggle through and get that aerial in some other time. I'm sure. Don't have time to listen to radios and stuff. Right, so that's the boost box wired in. ECU's in. Um, so that now, obviously before, we bolted up from the, from the underside. So what I'm planning on doing here, just to keep it so it doesn't fall off and it's a usable space, is I'm going to drill a couple of holes in here and just put a, a couple of self tappers, a little couple of little screws in, and then we'll put the rubber mat in there. You'd never know. But um, looks all right, that doesn't it? What do you think? Looks the dogs, I think. You'd never know the ECU's in there now. Um, because it does get a lot of questions like, what's that? Why is that there? Um, and it just looks better like that, doesn't it? I hope you agree. Well, even if you do, if you don't. Doesn't really matter, I suppose. It's staying like that. People, it's my car, I'll do what I want. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, right, so I'll go and get a drill, a couple of screws. we put that in. Or maybe, maybe first we should just fire it up, eh? Just make sure she actually starts. What do you think, peeps? Don't have to then all do all that because something's not... I'm going to fire her up. Give me a second. Oh, all seems OK. Right, catch up with us again when um, I'll show you some other stuff that I mess about with. Maybe you want to see it, maybe you don't, I don't know. Um, let us know, leave us a comment down here somewhere. If there's anything on Dora here, or one of the other trucks, Blucy maybe. Uh, take them glasses off because now I can see properly. Um, yeah, one of the other trucks, Blucy, or One Eyed Ben's truck, or even the little Jimny. If there's, any, uh, if there's stuff that you'd like to see when we're messing about with these things and, and we show you how we do it, and I like keep saying it's not necessarily the right way to do things, but it gets it done, gets it back on the road. Um, leave us a comment down there somewhere, let us know. Uh, and we'll see what we can do, we'll see what we can get you. Right, so in the meantime, don't forget now, like, share, subscribe, ring the little bell. You know the score now, ring the bell. Uh, and we'll catch up with you next time here on Four Wheel Drive UK. Take care, people. Gloves. A bit random, that one, it, really. What I meant is, look at me, I've got a pair of gloves on. Not too bad down there. That's a bit shitty, isn't it? But let's pretend we haven't seen that. Because that's been plated from outside. It's not like it's not been repaired. I just found in Dora's door pocket. Ugh. That was chicken and pepperoni sub roll. Oh dear.